What's going on my friends? Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we are going to talk about why we don't add up all the breakers in a panel to figure out what size our service is or to figure out what kind of conductors go in. Some people think, okay, so when you see a panel and these are all individual breakers in there, that for some reason you're just supposed to add all of them up and that's the size of the service. And that's not what you do. The reason is it would be so expensive. If you added all of this stuff up, you would get 400 amps on just one of the phases. So if you added every black breaker on black phase alone, you'd have 400 amps red phase, you'd have 400 amps. So you definitely wouldn't add every single number in here because then you'd have an 800 amp number and nobody's putting 800 amp services. It's just unnecessary. Not every one of these things are gonna be running at the same time. And so code allows us to derate things with the understanding that every once in a while, we're gonna be doing some, uh, you know, like drying clothes. Every once in a while, we're gonna be cooking. There are some loads that are gonna be running constantly at all times. So with those ones, we actually have to kind of bump up, we have to do 125% of that load if it's a continuous load. Um, so I'm not gonna get too crazy into the code here, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about why you don't add everything up and then why you do have the D ratings. So imagine right now, if we've got every one of these that's red, that's the red phase. So it's actually connected to our red wire. They skip inside of a panel, there's little fingers and every other one is a different phase. So the top two breakers are gonna be black phase or in Austin, there would be red phase because we do everything backwards, keep Austin weird, whatever but you would have everything black phase, everything red phase, black, red, black, red, black, red. So if you have a two pole breaker, that's like a 50 amp air conditioning breaker, you're gonna have one side of that that's on black phase and the other side of that that's on red phase. That's not 100 amps running through that 50 amp breaker. You don't add up the two 50s. When you have a two pole 50 breaker, that means that each phase is pulling 50 amps through it. It's just providing 240 volts of power so that there's 50 amps per phase. So you would, if anything, you're gonna be adding all of the like phases. So if we added up all of these black phases in here to think, okay, I need to get like a 400 amp panel or whatever, what size panel do I need to have? Well, if you did that, you would be assuming every single one of those black phases would be on at the same time. So you'd have to take every black phase on this side and then every black phase on the, uh, the other side and add them up together and you'd get 400 amps. Well. A 200 amp service, most houses, there's nothing plugged in and running. There might be some computers plugged in or whatever. You might have some lights on in the house. You're not burning every single light at all hours a day for four, eight hours. You're not plugged into every single outlet everywhere throughout the house with like 73 vacuum cleaners running. You know what I mean? Like you're not using most of the electrical system most of the time. So code's like, all right, let's kind of approximate some things. Let's do a little bit of engineering, some calculations and figure out what's more of a realistic kind of safe level that we should be putting everything at. So instead of just adding everything together in code, we have this really difficult thing called the standard method. There's also an optional method, it's much quicker. It's not quite as accurate. Uh, so it's gonna spit out a, a relatively close number as the standard method would. It's just faster, it's a little sloppier, but it's still okay per code. So uh, even that little discrepancy in size is okay. But doing both of the different methods, what it affords us to do as electricians is save money. So like we could put a 400 amp service in a tiny little house like I have, where it's like you know 1,000 square foot, 1,200 square foot. We could put 200 amp huge conductors in there and spend all that money and all that copper. I mean, we're talking probably like thousands of dollars of difference if we were just doing the add everything up method. And the, the service would have to be a 400 amp service. And so it'd be a whole different thing. They don't even make meter sockets for 400 amps. Well, they might, I, I mean, I've seen 400 amp meter sockets, but it's a really, really rare thing. Usually you're using CTs and there's an external meter and donuts and we're not gonna get into all of that, but you, you wouldn't need that much power available. You wouldn't need that, that uh, it's not even that much power available. They're not like giving you 400 amps. You don't need to account for that much current running through these conductors and overheating because there's never gonna be that much current going through these conductors that are feeding these. So you'd never need a breaker that size. You'd never need wire that size. It's just crazy, it's asinine. So we do these calculations over here. So the standard method has a whole bunch of different procedures, things that you need to go throughout code. There's kind of like 
depending on what you count as steps, anywhere from about like nine to 12 steps for um, doing a standard method calculation. So what it accounts for, there's a lighting load. It figures like, how much of this do we need to figure out per square foot of an entire building and how much uh, wattage or VA volt amps do we calculate for lighting based off of the size of the place? How many lights do we think are going to be on most of the time? So there's kind of a little uh, a number that they go with for square footage. We also have small appliance and laundry circuits. Well, small appliances and laundry circuits are probably going to be run a lot more often. That's why they have their own columns. So if you have like a microwave, if you have a toaster, you know, like any kind of small appliances that you might put up on countertops in kitchens. In kitchens, we do a lot of stuff. We spend a lot of time in kitchens, so they afford for that. The laundry circuits as well. A lot of laundry rooms, you're running wash machines all the time. Um, you might be doing like ironing in there or have all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's just a place that we kind of need to have like its own thing. So we figure out the, the different circuits and we put that into the calculation to account for it. We have demand factors, so we figure out out of all that stuff, what is our actual demand load? And so we know, even within those things going through them, that we're not using them 100% of the time. So what can we kind of derate and bring that value down to more realistic usage? So we can come up with a demand load. Usually, whatever we add these together, we get our first 3,000 VA, and we take that at 100%. And anything remaining over 300 or over 3,000 that you have in here, so like if you have like 17 lighting circuits or something like that, then you're going to do the remainder at 35%, not at 100%. Again, we're trying to we're trying to get as small of conductors and as small of a service onto a house that's economically viable, that is affordable, and that's realistic, and is you know not going to overheat or anything like that. So then once you get that all figured out, now you're getting to go to the big things. We've got appliances. So there's certain appliances in houses that we're probably going to be running all the damn time. Um, dishwashers, water heaters, things like that. Then we have dryers. Dryers specifically, they pull a lot of current. You know, a lot of them are 240 volt, 30 amp. So it needs its own line. AC versus heat. Well, you're never running AC and heat at the same time. So you have these kind of non-coincident loads where you have like things that aren't gonna really inter interact with each other. Um, so you usually take the bigger one, whichever is higher, your heat or your AC. Then we have largest motor FLA. So if you have other motors in your house for some reason, you've got other you know, kind of crazy things, we allow like a percentage of the, the nameplate rating of that motor to be added to its own line. Um, if you have things like welders and all kinds of stuff like Tesla chargers or anything that's other big loads, that's stuff that you want to consider in all of this. That's not saying in the standard method, this is the only thing you do. No, if you've got a lot of, you've got like crazy pool equipment and all kinds of like stuff where you've got like a 1200 amp, you know, service that you need just for the, the extra pools and everything, your, your calculation is going to be much different because you're adding way more things. So the likelihood of the conductors over, or over heating and the insulation melting off these conductors and needing a larger breaker is more of a possibility. Um, so once you get all of those values and what everything are the major loads, the realistic things that are going to be running and how often they're going to be running, um, then we would do a total of that number and take that total number of VA or of watts. You can, VA and watts aren't the same. We'll get into that in a later video, but then you would divide that by 240 volts. And that was, that's going to come up with a breaker size. It might be like 183 or something. And so you, we don't make breakers that are 183. So you can round up, uh, depending on the situation, you can round up to breakers. Um, but then that's just the breaker, right? That's the service rating. That's how we get the size of the service that we need. So if you got like 183, like you would have a 200 amp service. You just round up to 200 amps. We have a 200 amp service, 200 amp breaker, having a little bit of extra, uh, capacity inside of there is not going to be a problem. You don't want to go down. You don't want to go down to a 100 amp breaker when you have 183 amps worth of stuff that could potentially be drawing current at the exact same time. So you always go up a little bit. You say, yeah, let's just stick a 200 amp breaker in there just to be safe. Then from the breaker, we size our conductors. Our service entrance conductors have to be sized once we know the service rating. They can't be sized before that because they're always sized off of that breaker, how much current is going through it. So we would pick our service entrance conductors. And even there, there's a there's a, an allowance that we have a D rating. There's what we call the 83% rule. So any services between 100 and 400 amps, they allow us to do within, you know, certain reasons, they allow us to do an 83% uh, calculation. So basically the conductors can be 83% uh, of the size of the service rating, no less than that though. So you don't have to run 200 amp wire, this 200 amp breaker within services 100 to 400 amps, you can run some 
uh, figure out whatever wire is 83% of the size of that breaker and that's the wire that you can use. Again, we're just talking about saving money. We realize that these breakers are never gonna have this much current going through them, probably ever, but maybe, just maybe. Situations are right, you know, could happen. Um, so they allow us even more derate the conductors a little bit because realistically, even if we are bumping up and getting a 200 amp breaker, what's the likelihood that the wire is ever gonna have 200 amps going through it? Probably never, it's probably gonna have like 40 amps most of the time. Um, so that's why we figure out another derating off of that. And then we have the grounding electrode conductor, which is also sized off of the wire size that we put in there for that available fault current. So we're not sizing that off of the breaker size for a grounding electrode conductor. We're sizing it off of the service entrance conductors. The only time that we take grounds and we size them off the breaker is if they're equipment grounding conductors. Um, and that's like, you know, anytime you're running a circuit out to a piece of equipment, you run a ground with it. Well, you always go off the breaker size for that service or for that circuit. Um, but grounding electrodes are different. So you kind of have to, somebody asked me uh, in Discord in the 480 volt members only section, which if you guys are not 480 volt members, you should be. That's gonna be a huge part of what we do is having this kind of private chat where we spend a lot of time making videos to answer you guys' questions and providing value for you. Anyways, they asked like, why does this have to be so difficult? And now you understand, if it wasn't this difficult, we would be paying $10,000 in material to build a service, whereas we could now spend maybe $1,200 in material to build the same service. All right, now I realize it's not as helpful as if I just did an entire calculation. A few of you are probably like, please just do a calculation. So I do have some videos coming up. I'm actually recording that next. So I'm gonna do a standard method calculation. I'm gonna do an optional method calculation and I'll talk about the differences between the two of them. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your attention. See you in the next one. Best can't use it and video.